All right. Hopefully, if you're watching, you did as well on your test as my students in here did. Very pleased with how all of them did. Um, but if a future y'all are watching, hopefully you did well also. We're going to start with a practice exercise today, though. Practice exercise 61. Practice exercise 61. Won't need your calculator, just practicing some more algebra concepts, continuing with that theme. We will eventually leave that theme, but uh, for now, sticking with it. And uh, practicing some evaluation or numerical substitution here on exercise 61. You're told that A has a value of 2, B has a value of 3, and X has a value of 4. At your seats, find the value of each of those expressions. Everyone's there. You may begin. you'd memorized them in fourth grade like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, like a whole lot easier than that, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Go, go. Let's go ahead and take a look at these together. Quentin was first. Quentin, go across the top row. What'd you get for your answers? 10. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. 32. Excellent. Top row again was 10, 85, 288, and 32. Next row going across. 15. Yep. 7. Good. 64. Correct. 48. Excellent job. Got them all. Anyone else? Oh, look, that bottom row again was 16. He has the answers written on his wrist. Yep. 16, 7, 65, 48 <laughs> were your answers. Anyone else get them all correct also? Though maybe not as fast as Quentin. Questions on any of those? Questions on any? Did you grab them? No. <laughs> no, I've already graded two, so I only have one left to grade, and this is not it. The entire quarter? You're going to go. We do three per quarter, as I told you before. So we grade, take three as a quiz grade each quarter. I've already taken two, so to save it for later. But you never know when. Could be any time. Though there's that liberating feeling once you get that third one out of the way. I remember in high school myself saying, well, at least it's out of the way now. I don't have to worry about them being graded until next quarter. Is that what you get with your teaching, Kathy, from past teachers that you've had? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, that, that's the key to success in life, my I man, is watch what successful people do and steal their I methods. And that's what no we had three recording. So I've just been over here like, oh, is this one going to be graded? I never knew that we had three recording. I told you at the beginning of the year we grade three per quarter. We did. Very did first that. lesson. I told you how it works. Anyway, you can go back and watch the first lesson on the, actually, it would be the first lesson we actually did one of those. So it might have been like lesson two or three or something. But anyway, you can go back on YouTube and watch if you don't believe me. All right, get your compass and straight edge out if you would, please, along with some paper. And uh, we are going to begin and work over the next week or so on several more constructions. As I mentioned earlier in the year, I mentioned a lot of things earlier in the year, but as I mentioned earlier in the year, uh, usually we'll do constructions in, in sets of things. So we'll teach the material, do some constructions, teach the material, do some constructions. I'm going to get back into those. But um, remember when I gave you the definition of a proof, I said a proof is the process whereby the truth of a theorem or the correctness of a construction may be established. We're going to prove our constructions. We couldn't prove the first eight. Because at the time, we didn't have the wherewithal to prove it. We didn't have any facts, knowledge, or anything. So I want to go back now and uh, briefly discuss the proofs we would have used had we had the knowledge we have now to prove our first eight constructions. Moving forward, as we begin more constructions tomorrow, every construction we do, we will discuss the proof first and then get into the construction. Or perhaps, so this is how... It, this is what we do. This is why it has to work. Okay, so even proofs or even constructions will be proved as we move forward. But I want to start with the constructions one through eight. So let's practice them. It'll give us a good review, but also give us an opportunity to discuss why does this work. So our very first construction, if you want to go ahead and draw a line on your paper, for your very first construction, go ahead and draw a line on your paper. And for our first construction, we were constructing the perpendicular bisector of a given line segment. We're constructing the perpendicular bisector of a given line segment. And we said the first thing we'll do is we'll open up our compass a little bit more than halfway. We'll have the point of the compass at one end point, and we make an arc above. And we come down here and we make an arc below. Then we keep the compass open the same amount, go to the other end point, make an intersecting arc above and an intersecting arc below. And then to finish, we would connect the dots. Now, we've already actually discussed the proof of this uh, earlier in the school year, um, not you know, necessarily formally saying that this is the proof of construction well, but I did actually address this. So here's to see if anyone remembers or could figure out why does this have to work. Why does this have to work? Volunteer. Uh, I have a question. Can yeah. you show that again? I was trying to. Can you show me what you did the first You time? don't remember construction one? I remember. I, no. Put the point of the compass, arc, arc. Point of the compass, same arc, arc. Connect the dots. So why does this have to work? Big guy. <laughs> Big brain. What are you points. doing when you open your compass class? You're measuring out some distance. distance, right? So this point right here then has a set distance to this end point, correct? And the same distance to that end point. We could say then that this point class is equidistant from these two end points. What about this point down here? Equidistant. And um, any point that is equidistant from the ends of a line lies in the perpendicular, perpendicular bisector. And considering two points determine a straight line, two points, each equidistant from the ends of a line, determine the perpendicular bisector of that line. All of these things have been proven already. Therefore, this construction has to work because it's based off of things that have been previously proven. Now, another way you could do it, I suppose, would be to draw this line here and this line here. <coughs> I, my arm was covering the end of the line. I didn't know where the end of the line went. Uh, this line there. And we could say, well, I know these two lines are equal because they're equidistant, right? The measurement of the lines is the same. And, of course, I know this line is equal to itself by identity. And... Um, 
Let's see, can we get any angles equal? Well, yeah, I guess we could say, well, if we have equal sides, we have equal angles. But that'd be side-side angle, wouldn't it? Um, so congruent triangles don't really work that way. Um, though we could also say that this line is equal to this line. And in fact, all four lines have to be equal, correct? So therefore, we have uh, opposite sides equal and opposite sides equal. Therefore, it's a parallelogram, correct? And we know the diagonals of a parallelogram must bisect each other, so these two pieces must be equal, and therefore these two pieces must be equal. Oh, and therefore by side, 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 we have congruent triangles, therefore equal angles. And by definition, if adjacent angles are equal when two straight lines meet, they are, per they are right angles, so therefore perpendicular. Therefore perpendicular bisector. Much harder way to do it, but it does work. Yes, sir? Why must the sides be equal? Why must what? The sides be equal. These sides? Because right. they all have the exact same measurement. How do you determine the length of a line? You measure the distance of the endpoints. All the endpoints can coincide, therefore it must work. Yep. All right. Questions on this one? Our second construction, go and draw an angle on your paper. Our second construction was to bisect an angle. So for sake of review, let's go ahead and draw an angle. And you'll recall that to bisect an angle, you were to take your compass, open it up so that it would fit on both lines, and make an arc through both sides. You were then supposed to move the point of the compass to one intersection, open the compass really any amount. I'm going to open it a little bit more, make an arc, keep it that same new amount then, go to the other intersection, make an intersecting arc. And when you connected the dots, you said this would have to bisect the angle. At least I told you it would bisect the angle. Now we're going to say it has to bisect the angle. Question, why must this bisect the angle? Give me some thoughts. Chris? That's from any, uh, from any point on, so if from a point, um, it's equal distance from any point. I always mess up how the wording on this one. That means we don't have it memorized. Yeah. <laughs> you can't mess up the, memoriz the wording if you've got it memorized. Hmm. A point on a line is equal distance from the endpoints. Uh, no, from a point on the line then it's equal distance from the why don't we draw auxiliary lines here? What do we know about the two auxiliary lines, class? They're equal. Because we measured it that way with the compass, right? That's why we had to keep, keep the compass open the same amount so that those two lines would be equal. What do we know about these two lines? They're equal because their endpoints can also be made to coincide. What do we know about this line? It's equal to itself. Equal to itself. So what do we know about the triangles? Congruent by side side, 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 side. So what do we know about the corresponding parts? They're equal. Equal. So therefore, if these angles are equal, this line is a bisector. Right? Um, so again, that's one of the ways in which we could prove that as well. Um, another construction we did was to copy an angle. So we'd be given some angle and asked to construct an equal angle. Of course, the first thing you do is draw one side of the new angle. So you can draw an angle and then draw one side of what will be the new angle. Of course, you'll recall the first thing we would do is, again, open the compass so it fits on the angle and on the line and make an arc through both sides, kind of like you were bisecting it. Come over here, though, and make that exact same arc, keeping the compass open the same amount. From there, then, you were to measure across that arc and mark that right there. And then all you had to do was to connect the dots. And I told you the angles would be equal. Why do you suppose this has to work? Do they have the same angle bisector? Angle bisector? There's no angle bisector. Because the, the lines are very equal. Why? Can we draw an auxiliary line to make it a triangle? I love the way you think on that one. The first couple thoughts are not so great, but I love triangles. Um, the best angle to approach any angle is the triangle, or to approach any challenge is the triangle. It cringe, it's it's true in life with the TRY, but it's true in geometry with the TRI, right? What do we know about these two lines with respect to each other? But what do we know about these two lines with respect to these two lines? They're all going to have endpoints that can coincide, right? Because we use that same arc. So all of these lines have to be equal. And this distance was measured the same as that distance. So class, 
So, so what do we know about the triangles? The side, 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 side. So it has to be two by the corresponding parts. Equal by CBCT, so hence equal angles. See kind of a theme of how we can prove this? Triangles are, are great for this. Uh, our fourth construction was to take any line, pick any random point in the line, and to construct a perpendicular at that point. Just take any line, pick any point in the line, and construct a perpendicular at that point. Yeah, the way we would do this construction, you recall, is to take your compass, measure a little shorter than the short side. Now, if that was too short, you could always extend the line a little bit. But assuming your compass could fit on the short side, make a little mark. And on the other side, make the exact same size mark. Right? Keep the compass open the same amount. So the end points coincide. Right? And then I said you've got to open your compass a little bit bigger. Go to one intersection, make an arc. Go to the other intersection, make an arc. And when you connect the dots down, you will get a perpendicular. Begs the question, someone besides Chris this time, why must this work? But maybe steal Chris's idea. As I said before, the best, uh, the best ideas are often stolen. So let's get someone to steal Chris's idea from the last one. I see my name is Christopher, can I do it? No. Auxiliary line. <laughs> auxiliary line, what about you, Ethan? Which auxiliary lines are you thinking? Uh, on the point to the uh, intersection. These ones here? Yeah. All right, so Ethan, what are your thoughts? Well, the line in the middle is equal to the L. Okay. Because it's Pythagorean. And then the uh, line we just do are equal to the distance there. Right, equal, equal uh, distance there. End points coincide. And then that bottom line would then be equal because of. Right, end points coincide, right? So, uh, so side, 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 they're congruent. How does that make this perpendicular? Right. Because of CPCTE, I know these two angles are equal. But how many lines form those angles? Uh, three, four. Two. two. One, two. Only two lines make equal adjacent angles. And any time two lines make equal adjacent angles, right. they've got to be right angles, got to be perpendicular. All right? Make sense? All right, let's uh, go to the next one where we uh, have another line. But this time we picked a point that was uh, maybe above the line, and we wanted to construct a perpendicular from that point. Well, by way of reminder, you'd put your point of the compass on the given point, and open your compass past the line. From there, you would make an arc that cuts through the line twice, like a smiling face with one eye, so there's Cyclops construction. Then we give our Cyclops a goatee. Did you just say like me? You don't have a goatee, Jim. Oh, Mike Wazowski. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then we would connect the dots through to get our perpendicular. Someone besides Chris or Ethan, why must this work? Thoughts on how we can do the proof? <laughs> ah, Quentin jumps up there. Way to go. Way to go, guys. Take the lead here. All right. So you said draw auxiliary lines. What auxiliary lines are you thinking? Point to where the smile cuts. All right, so one there and one there. Okay? Same on the other side. So down here to this point. Okay? Right, now these two sides are equal, and if you didn't change your compass, these two are equal to the same thing, but if you had, and you could have, these two are equal. So let's not assume these necessarily equal those, though you could. Um, then what? triangles in the picture, it's true. Well, let's put it this way. I know that this angle equals this one, correct? Mm -hmm. right. And um, I uh, also know that this angle must equal this one. 
right? Therefore, this angle must equal that one, correct? And so by side angle side, this triangle on the side here is congruent to that one. Therefore, that angle must equal that, that angle must equal that by CPCTE, right? And uh, this line must equal itself, as must this line equal itself, correct? And so these two triangles could be congruent by um, side angle angle, angle side angle, side angle side. There's a lot of ways to get them congruent, basically. Congruent triangles equal angles, but two lines making equal angles, right angles perpendicular. That makes sense? Questions on that one? All right. Construction number six was to, uh, and for sake of time, we won't do it, but remember I gave you three sides, and I said construct a triangle. And so we drew a baseline, we measured the long line, we marked it off, we measured the next longest line, we made an arc, we measured the next longest line, we made an arc, and then we connected the dots down. Why must that construction work? Because given three sides, and given another triangle with the same three sides, we proved that they would be congruent by side, side, side. Meaning, there's really only one triangle you can draw with three sides, correct? They would all be the same. Now, they might be positioned differently, but that doesn't make them less congruent. So given three sides, there's only one triangle you can construct. Therefore, that construction must work, assuming right, that the two short sides have a sum that is greater than the longest side. All right, the next triangle that we have, you were given uh, one side and two angles. And remember, we mark off the side, we'd copy this angle, we'd copy this angle, which we turn it backwards, and we get a triangle. Well, again, angle, side, angle. If you have two triangles that have the same angle, sides, and angles, they have to be congruent, so there's only one triangle you can construct from two angles and a side between them, assuming the sum of the two angles is less than a straight angle. If their sum was greater, it wouldn't work, but assuming that, only one triangle, so therefore by angle, side, angle, construction seven must work. And then construction eight gave you two sides and one angle. And we would draw a long line, measure off the side, mark it off, measure the angle, mark it off, measure this side, mark it off their side, angle, side, you see where this is going, the triangle, well there's only one triangle you can form with side, angle, side. Again, assuming the angle is not a reflex angle or straight angle, assuming it's something less than a straight angle, then uh, we can make that construction work. So really the six, seven, eight construction reasons were congruent triangles, right? Congruent triangles that essentially prove those works. Questions on constructions one through eight. All right, tomorrow we're gonna start construction nine, but I wanna do something a little different for the rest of the day today. So um, you've got your compass, you've got your straight edge. We're gonna construct some angles of specific degrees. Now, we're not going to use our protractor to do it. That would be drawing an angle of specific degrees. I'm going to show you that there are many different angles you can actually exactly construct. I want to start with this one. Um, 90 degrees. How would I construct a 90 degree angle? I need a lady to help me since the guys helped me earlier. How could I construct a perfect 90 without using a protractor? I'm sorry? Draw a line? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Draw two lines that make an L. So take my straight edge, take my straight edge, and I've got a perfect 90? How do I know it's a perfect 90, though? Uh, Audrey? Do any form of perpendicular. Perpendicular bisector, construction one. Uh, perpendicular at a point, construction four. Perpendicular from a point, construction five. If you do any of your perpendiculars, you'll have a 90. On your paper, construct a perfect 90 degree angle. Your choice. Construct a perfect 90 degree angle. It's your choice how you do it. I'm going to do the perpendicular at a point. But you are free to do whatever method you choose. accomplished? No. I don't think so. I never feel accomplished. It's okay because we're going to, I'm going to show you there's more angles than 90 that you could construct. Mm -hmm. You could construct a perfect 45 degree angle. 
Someone besides, okay, so okay, Kendall, Genesis, and Jamie. One of you needs to figure out how we can construct a perfect 45. Angle bisector. Bisector 90, right? So now that you've got your 90, <laughs> pull out your compass. Bisect it. Kendall's like, I got this one. I'm going to jump in because they're going to get harder, and I don't want to have to try to answer one. Smart, smart. That's always my strategy. If I know the answer to something, volunteer quick on something you know you know. Because once you get your answer in there, you know the teacher's going to call on other people, and you can sit back when you don't know. <laughs> All right, so 45. And technically, you get a couple of 45s, don't you? Um, but you get a perfect 45-degree angle by bisecting a perfect 90, which I can construct. So therefore, you can construct a 45-degree angle anytime you wanted one. How would I construct a... Uh, 22 degree, 30 minute angle. Jamie or Genesis? <laughs> would you do another angle bisector? I would bisect a... Um, you would bisect a 45. You would bisect one of your two 45s you've got. So, um, let me, uh, I'll bisect the top one just to be different. <laughs> and I constructed a perfect 22 degree 30 minute angle. Can you also make an 11, uh, an 11, 11 degree, degree 15, 15 minute angle? angle? Yeah, you see how this is going. I mean, as long as you can start with it, there's a whole lot of angles you can go. We're not going to keep going down that rabbit hole, but you understand we could, right? Um, what about a. Um, 135 degree angle. It's Genesis's turn. <laughs> How do I construct a perfect 135 degree angle? Um, No, 90 and 90 is 180. So like if you have 90 plus... So if I could make a 90 bigger, okay, bigger by how much? By 45. And since I, in fact, technically Genesis, I have a 135 on the board already. Here's 90, and there's 45. So technically, at your seats, go ahead and mark that you already have a 135 degree angle. For that matter, 112 degrees, 30 oh, minutes. No. Right. Thoughts, anyone? <laughs> What? I already have that too. If I take the 90 and one of my 22 and a halves, right? This would be 112 degrees, 30 minutes, wouldn't it? Um, no. Ooh, how about this? No. What about, uh, yes, yes. How about 157 degrees, 30 minutes? We don't already have this one. At least not the way I drew it. To what? You could add it to the 135. A couple ways you could do this. You could tack it onto the 135 or you could subtract it from 180. I want you to do this. Just draw a straight line and pick a random point to call your vertex. You've just drawn a straight angle, right? So we just did 180, which is, which is great. I want you to take your compass, find wherever you marked your 2230. Make an arc on the 2230, make an arc here. Measure 
and measure. And by essentially subtracting a 2230 off of 180, I leave myself a 157.30. That make sense? So you can subtract angles away from things. So, for instance, uh, if I wanted a 67-degree uh, 30-minute angle, technically I have this one already as well. Just take the 45 and the 22.30 together, right? But if I didn't already have that, make a 90, you know, perpendicular, measure this and mark it off of the 90. And by subtracting it away, I've given myself 67.30. That make sense? So some different angles we could do there. How about this? So let's, uh, let's change gears there. What about a 60 degree angle? I'm going to open the floor to anyone here. How do I make a perfect 60? The special number. Get a 30, get a 90 degree and get a 30 degree. How would I get a 30 degree? You're right, if I could get a 30, I could subtract it off a 90, I'd be good. Um, but since I don't know how to get a 30. You can't get a 15 either for me. Not from this. We have to come up with a whole new way to do it. But it's a way we should think about it because 60 degrees is an angle number that should resonate. What kind of triangle, Audrey? An equilateral triangle. Do we know how to construct an equilateral triangle? Therefore, therefore we know how to construct a 60 degree angle. In fact, we know how to construct three of them, technically. Draw any line. Measure with your compass any amount on that line. Make a nice sweeping arc. Then go to this end, and if you were to make the same arc, you would form an equilateral triangle wouldn't you? But we don't want to form the whole triangle. I really only need to form the angle. The angle. Must be a perfect 60. So, how would I make a 30 degree angle class? Bisect. Go ahead and bisect your 60. Uh, a 120 degree angle. Anybody? Very high. I don't. We'll draw the other line. Draw. I'm sorry? Draw 360. Okay, so here, here's a thought. Don't do this, but just here's a thought. I could uh, take my compass, open it to some amount, make an arc on the 60, but then I could keep on going around, right? I could measure off the 60, mark it off again, and when I connect the dots, again, you're not actually doing this, but uh, when I do, that would give me back-to-back -back 60s, which would be 120 degrees, right? That would work. There's an easier way, though. I thought I heard Audrey say something. Okay, so you were saying essentially the same thing. He said, anyone think of a faster way? Why don't you just draw the other line? What other line? The other, complete the triangle. Complete the triangle like this? Mm -hmm. That would give me a 60, a 60, and another 60. But, oh, I think I see what you're just saying here, Chris. Okay. It took me a minute because it, it's basically a similar idea to what I'm doing here. Where's your 120? At the top? No, that's 60. On the outside. The outside. The exterior angle right here has to be 120, doesn't it? So much. Here's what I was going to suggest. <laughs> Take your straight edge and extend the line. And because you had a 60 right here, there's your 120. Yeah. Right? Um, what about a, uh, a 150 degree angle? I'm done talking. What about a 150? <laughs> Audrey, how do you make a 150? 
Anybody? I already have it. Where is it, Quentin? On my table. Where your 120 is. Where my 120 is? Yeah, you have 120. Oh, okay. So you say where the 120 is right here, and then the other half of the 60 is 150, right? What if I wanted to get um, 165 degrees? If I bisect the 30, that'll get, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's bisect the 30. Bisect the 30. And that'll allow us to form a 15, a 15 down below it. But then to the other side of it, you get 165. Okay, how about this? So we also did a 15 at the same time. What about a 105 degree angle? Jamie? We just take the 15 and add it to um, a 9 degree. Yeah, so let's do another perpendicular real quick. Let's do another perpendicular to get a 90, because we kind of marked up that other 90 pretty bad. So let's make a 90. And we'll add on the 15 to our 90. So give yourself a perpendicular. Add on the angle then, you're going to have to copy your 15 which is a small angle so it's not going to be easy. I don't have enough room for that so let me, uh, let me take it in about here. Measure that itty bitty 15 arc which is easier said than done I know so if it's a struggle for you well yeah, I know. And if I tack on this 15 to the 90, I have 105. Make sense? How about um, a 75 degree angle? Minus 15 from the angle. True. You already have it. I already have it. Yeah, okay, I already have it. So I want to pick you There's up. 75. So what if I wanted 37 degrees, 30 minutes? Bisect the 75. Bisect the 75. We're not going to take time to do it. What if I want to stay with me 52 degrees, 30 minutes? Bisect the 105. You realize there's a bunch of angles, and this wasn't all of them, right? We could have kept bisecting. Into it. There's a bunch of exact angles you can construct perfectly without even using a protractor. Just take some number sense, and the ability to start with a 60, equilateral triangle, or a 90, perpendicular. And from there, a lot of, we, could, we didn't even start doing any reflex angles, did we? No homework this evening. We'll start on constructions 9, 10, and hopefully 11 tomorrow. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.